everyone. Now, uh, our lesson for today is one of the two lectures regarding RNA viruses. So, this is your RNA virus 1, which covers the uh, positive RNA, both the encapsulated and the unencapsulated un groups. Okay. So, here is a good classification or a table that classifies the RNA viruses. It's very nice. Okay. So in here, okay, so it's divided into four groups, the positive RNA, the negative RNA, the positive or negative RNA, and the positive RNA via DNA. For today's lesson, it would be the positive RNA with the and unenveloped and, and the enveloped uh, groups. So we start with the unenveloped groups. Okay. So here is a, again another beautiful uh, presentation or, or a table that uh, compare the sizes of the of the viruses, both for DNA and RNA, in comparison to the smallest bacteria, which is chlamydia. And one of the uh, common or average bacterial size, bacilli, which is your E. coli. Okay. So your human DNA virus, the smallest is parvovirus, but for human RNA virus, the smallest is the coronavirus. The largest among the human RNA will be your paramyxo, while in your human DNA virus, it will be your paxovirus. Now let's talk about your our unenveloped or naked RNA viruses, which comprises of your picornaviridae. It in includes the enteroviruses, namely your poliovirus, Oxaki A and B virus, the echovirus, and hepatitis A virus, and a respiratory virus, which is your rhinovirus, your Calisiviridae, which comprises your Norwalk and related viruses. So take note that both the Corna, Alisi, and Rayo virus are all resistant to the detergents and acid and are transmitted via the fecal oral route. So your picorna, misentero, polio, coxsackie, ENB, or echo, and hepatitis A are all, uh, and your calici are all detergent and acid resistant and transmitted via the oral fecal route. So the poliovirus binds to receptors on muscles, cells, and neurons, causing the disease in the central nervous system. And while your Coxsackie viruses and echoviruses has a broader tissue trophism, means it loves more, okay? And because not only the CNS is affected, but also it affects their lungs, the heart, the pancreas, and other tissue. So that's how we compare your Coxsackie from your poliovirus. This is a very good diagram for, uh, that shows us the pathogenesis of the picornavirus. So all of the enteroviruses will enter by your fecal root and are shed by the stools okay and it can cause different diseases depending on the target tissue that is infected some enteroviruses like your rhinovirus can be spread by respiratory means and cause symptoms of the cold common cold as the virus enters the body and goes to the um, blood system, it causes your primary viremia and our antibodies are in it to prevent further spread. However, if they can reach our target tissues, wherein there will be secondary viremia, okay, 
the liver is infected by the hepatitis A. The meninges is infected by either your echo or your coxsackie that causes meningitis. The brain can be infected by both your polio and coxsackie A7. It causes encephalitis and hepatitis disease. A mass that can be infected by your echo and coxsackie N infecting the heart and the thorax. For the heart, it causes myocarditis and for the thorax, it causes chlorodema. And the skin can also be infected with manifestations with your echo and coxsackie, okay? Especially your coxsackie causes your uh, rash, your hand, hand, foot, and mouth disease, and your hand, hair pangina. Coxsackie A can cause your hand, foot, and mouth disease in your hair pangina. So this is a very good tabulation or a, or a diagram regarding the pathogenesis of the picorna viruses. Now let's proceed to your picorna vinde. It causes poliomyelitis. Okay. Uh, caused by poliovirus and Coxsackie A virus. And also it causes aborted poliomyelitis. And Non-paralytic polymyelitis, or otherwise uh, labeled as aseptic meningitis, it manifests as fever, headache, sore throat, stiff neck, and if ever there will be a lumbar tap, they will show pelocytosis of your cerebrospinal fluid. And then, of course, there will be our paralytic polymyelitis, which is the major illness. It will have the same symptoms as the non paralytic type, but it has the flaxive type of paralysis, which results from the destruction of the lower motor neurons. Okay, your hair pangina and hand foot mouth disease are all caused by your Coxsackie A virus. This is really self limited. Among young children with a marked vesicular lesions with mild fever. The Coxsackie A virus can also cause an acute type of hemorrhagic uh, conjunctivitis. The Coxsackie B can cause your bone home disease, which is an epidemic of uh, chlorodemia, which uh, is characterized by sudden sharp paroxysmal chest pain with fever, usually seen in adolescent and young adults. Your Coxsackie viruses and echovirus can also cause aseptic meningitis with a possible rash. Your Coxsackie and echovirus can cause also respiratory infection aside from your rhinovirus. It can be a symptom, see, of a common cold. Okay. Your Cox echovirus 11 and Coxsackie V virus can both cause fatal neonatal disease. So this is your hair pangina. This is your hair pangina. See, it is a grayish lesion with that uh, erythematous base. Okay, those are going to be later on the ulcers in the posterior pharynx or in the soft palate. It is caused by Coxsackie A virus. So transmission, all enteroviruses can be spread by oral fecal food. Your Coxsackie viruses and echovirus are also spread by aerosols. Now, the wild type poly exists in, in Africa and in Southeast Asia. So this is the, uh, hand, the picture of a, uh, the palmar manifestation of the hand foot mouth disease. These are erinematous papillus the markings. So, palm and this is your hand foot mouth disease. Okay, so it's for the prevention and treatment. All the vaccines are part of the recommended childhood vaccination regimen. So, we have two types of the polio vaccine the South vaccine, this formerly inactivated polio vaccine, which is your IPV, 
and your Sabin vaccine, which is the live polio vaccine or your OPV. OPV is a mixture of three polio virus types. The live vaccine poses a risk for reversion to virulence and a risk in immunocompromised individual. That's why uh, it is preferred to give your inactivated polio vaccines, okay? Or your killed uh, vaccine is currently recommended where natural polio has been eradicated, okay? Okay, now we go to the another part of your picon, your virid, your rhinoviruses, which are acid lab and transmitted primarily by aerosols or own fomites. Well, your rhinovirus has more than a hundred serotypes that can cross the common cold. And it cannot replicate at temperatures lower than 33 degrees. Replication occurs primarily in the nasal mucosa and conjunctiva, causing edema of the subepithelial tissue and release of your inflammatory mediators, which is responsible for the many symptoms. Your secretary IgA and interferons, which is produced in response to infection, limit the spread of the rhinovirus within the body. And your rhinoviral respiratory tract infection, called your common cold, is usually will include sneezing, rhinorrhea, or runny nose, headaches, short throat, and malaria. Fever and chills may occur. Infection peaks in three to four days, but cough and nasal symptoms may last for seven to ten days. It can be associated with acute sinusitis due to the blockage of your sinus tray. Okay, next you will, go, will be your Calisi viridae, which includes your normal and related viruses. These are very small viruses with naked icosahedral capsid in a single stranded RNA genome. So let's talk about Norwalk. It, okay, uh, it affects the brush border okay, of the intestine. The brush border function is compromised by the infection preventing absorption of water and nutrients causing diarrhea, which is the uninfectious type of diarrhea. So, it also causes delayed gastric emptying, causing vomiting and gastroenteritis. So, the incubation period for a normal Norwalk gastroenteritis would be from 24 to 60 hours, which is followed by watery diarrhea when with nausea and vomiting. Fever is persistent in one third of cases. Usually, your nerve uh, gastroenteritis is self limited and may be treated with bismuth salicylate to reduce symptoms. Well, pickle all the root through contaminated food and water are the mode of transmission. Now, let's talk about your Rio Viridae. Okay, your Rio Viridae has, uh, its member is your rotavirus. So this, it causes a severe dehydrating diarrhea because rotavirus have cholera-like virion protein, toxin-like virion protein, which induces loss of electrolytes and inability to absorb water, which results to, from the infection of the intestinal mucosa. So, in here, there is massive shedding of virions, which occurs during diarrhea, contributing to transmission of the infection. Their secretary IgA antibodies in the intestine confers immunity to rotavirus infection. So, rotavirus uh, gastroenteritis, the incubation period is around 48 hours. It manifests as watery diarrhea with vomiting and fever that lasts for 4 to 5 days. And Thus, it causes the risk for dehydration. But usually, the disease is self limited and leads to complete recovery. However, the disease is most severe in infants and may be potentially be fatal, which can be secondary to dehydration in infants who are malnourished and dehydrated before the infection. Children older than two years old and adults usually develop only mild diarrhea. So, it is noteworthy to remember that rotavirus infection is the most important cause of infant gastroenteritis worldwide. Then, with your real very base, you have your cholera thick fever, which uh, behave like the, similar to dengue fever. 
bad it is. Now let's talk about the second group of your virus would be your envelope viruses, RNA positive envelope viruses, which are your Corona, Flavi, and your Toga. Okay, let's proceed to the to discuss the coronaviridae. Coronaviridae, as we all know, the coronavirus. Okay, it's a large envelope virus with a positive RNA genome. It has a corona-like appearance in electron micrographs. It is usually transmitted via respiratory drop, causing respiratory drop infection. It is one of the common cause of the common cold. It has a longer incubation from a period of three days. A gastrointestinal manifestation of the disease is quite uncommon, but it can cause now your acute, severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS, which uh, when when at this period of the slides um, uh, of this slides uh, when making of this slide with the slides recording it's we have your COVID-19 so this is particularly the family of your COVID-19 the coronavirus and this is the characteristic of their family. They are large envelope RNA virus. They are spread through uh, respiratory droplets. They cause respiratory symptoms, uncommon with their gastrointestinal symptoms. But it's usually is uncommon, but for COVID-19, it's now common to have a severe acute respiratory symptom. Now, let's go to your uh, arboviruses or arthropod-borne viruses, which are your flavivirus and your togavirus. So these are arboviruses. The vector is usually mosquito. Okay. So dengue is is a member of your flavivirus. It's also called your breakbone fever because when you have this infection, it feels severe bone pain. So this is a flavivirus that is transmitted by the uh, vector Aedes species, okay, usually in the Caribbean and Southeast Asia. The initial exposure causes high grade fever, headache, crush, and back and bone pain that lasts for six to seven days. A challenge with related strain can result in severe. Okay, the challenge means uh, getting another strain of the same virus can result in severe dengue hemorrhagic fever or even dengue shock syndrome. Now, so this is your beautiful mosquito with stripes of white that lives in clean water, usually in our household. They are your Aedes aegypti. So, your yellow fever, also transmitted by Aedes species, mosquito found usually in the tropical South America and Africa. It causes the generation of the liver, kidneys, and heart that can result to high mortality during epidemics. It causes high grade fever, jaundice, and a black vomit due to gastrointestinal black hemorrhage. Okay, these are their common symptoms. In yellow fever, you can see councilman bodies or apoptotic cytopenic inclusion, which are found in the liver. So the councilman bodies are found in the liver. Rabivirus and virus can also cause encephalitis. Okay, your Togo virus such as your Eastern and Eastern and Western equine encephalitis viruses can occur in the United States. Your flavivirus like your St. Louis encephalitis virus also are found in the US and Western encephalitis virus which are widely distributed. Okay, by your and this is the pattern of your arbo viral transmission. Okay, so from the virus, the natural animal host, the vector, and the uh, 
host end of end host okay so in here infections in which host can transmit the virus back to the vector so the virus the natural host is a bird this uh, taken in by the culex that infect man and horse so okay and your cell flu and encephalitis can transmit it to the culex the culex can again transmit it to the bird and the culex can also transmit it to the human in urban settings and the human can transmit it again when bitten by the mosquito can also transmit virus back to the birds so as with your dengue and yellow fever usually in the jungle with the mammals and the monkeys there will be these are the natural hosts and they will be bitten by the abyss okay? and that will now be transmitted to the human an infected human can be bitten by an infected mosquito and this mosquito can, oh, can again infect the natural host. Okay, so that is our next short lecture regarding your positive RNA, both the naked or the unenveloped and the enveloped RNA viruses. So, see you on the next session. So, don't forget again, if you think, uh, enjoy this slide, please. Uh, click the thumbs up and notification and please share this video so that more uh, more uh, students can learn on this simple video thank you have a great day